when I'm in the airport, I like to hold a book up to my face. I love to read, contrary to popular belief, and I keep it up to my face, and, and I bark like a dog, and then I look around like I don't know where the noise came from. You should try it, it's hilarious. I'm sitting at the gig, I'm, Sometimes I make it sound far away. And dog lovers are the worst. Thinking, this lady sitting across from me, do you have a dog? I had to keep a straight face. I was like, yeah, it's in my backpack. She said, can he breathe? I said, don't worry about it. I'm thinking to myself, who keeps a dog in the backpack? <laughs> Crazy lady. I know if you have ADD, here's one thing. If you, have, you can't play jokes on people because your mind doesn't think about point B. <laughs> Two weeks before Christmas, I'm walking in the Orlando airport, busy airport. I see paper money laying on the ground. That's exciting. So I picked it up. But you got to do the right thing with paper money. You, I mean, could have been anybody. I, you got to make sure somebody in the immediate area may have just dropped it. So I did the right thing. I lifted it up and I said, does this belong to anybody? Okay. <laughs> now I'm excited because it's mine. I unfold it and I see it's a $500 bill from Jamaica. <laughs> I'm still excited till I go to currency exchange and find out it's worth a dollar 73 cents American minus a $5 service fee. <laughs> It's worth nothing. I was so excited, now I'm so depressed. Has anybody ever got something you thought was worth something to find out it's not worth anything? I got a gift certificate once to Whole Foods for $100, which is enough to make a down payment on a grape at Whole Foods. <laughs> Food's so expensive there, why? Because it's organic. Ooh, have you ever seen the chickens with no steroids? They look like a parakeet from a third world country. <laughs> Nine dollars a pound. No, thank you. I go to Walmart. The chickens look like they're on the cover of Muscle and Fitness. <laughs> Speaking of gift certificates, this is interesting. I'm in Goodwill. I wanted to buy a green neon roadside vest in case I had a flat tire. Wanted people to notice me on the side of the road. Thought I got a good deal on a green neon roadside vest for a dollar. Till I got it home, my wife said, did you even look at the back, the big letters that say inmate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I was leaving Goodwill, they had a sign up there that proudly said, Goodwill now offers gift certificates. Now, wouldn't that be a warm, fuzzy feeling when you're receiving a gift from someone and you open that envelope and see that you meant so much to them that you're worthy of $25 worth of stuff that some other people didn't want. <laughs> we found a new form of regifting. <laughs> Wait till it's my turn to give you a gift. Anyway, I got off the subject. I'm standing in the airport with this Jamaican $500 bill. I've been duped, but I'm the only one that knows about it. If I were a mature person, I'd have let it go. But no, I thought if it fooled me, you could fool someone else. Let's pay the mood swing forward. <laughs> so I eat at Chili's. Chili's, I get nachos, $10. I give this nice young girl, looked to be in her mid-20s. I gave her the $10, $5 tip. I just wanted to see her reaction to the Jamaican $500 bill. She looks at me, eyes get wide, looks at the bills, goes, I don't know who you are or why you did this, but I have a baby daughter who I need to take to the doctor this afternoon and I didn't have the $100 copay. And this morning I got on my knees and I prayed for a miracle and I guess <laughs> you, sir, are the miracle that God has sent me today. Like, She goes, I can't find the words to thank you. I said, well, you could tell me where an ATM machine is. <laughs> Would anybody in this room left it like that? Just left? <laughs> Who? Who said yes? Got away, he's gonna be struck by lightning. <laughs> you can't leave this. 
I dug this hole, I gotta dig myself out. I, go, I should be happy helping a young woman out. But no, I'm saying bad words at the ATM machine. Just, <laughs> I get $100. Here's where I don't think things through. She doesn't know the Jamaican $500 bill's not worth anything. I lay, the, I lay the $100 on there. She starts crying more. She goes, why? You're, why are you doing this? You're a saint. Thank you. Now I can afford to buy my other baby's Christmas presents now. I'm like, all right, I'll be right back. I got to. <laughs> so if you want to know what the going price for a jerk is, it's $215. Uh... So I'm eight and a half months pregnant, and I'm living in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. And it was a tough time, but it was a good time, you know? We're on, Fort Sill, we're, we're on base at Fort Sill, and I took my... Um, girlfriend who lived next door to me, and we were gonna go to the commissary and get some <laughs> groceries to share, pretty much. So she was she was sitting there, and I'm eight and a half months pregnant, and I'm in the I'm in the Dodge Dart Pentecostal putt putt Lazarus, and I stop at a red light, and two soldiers were right there. They're probably as close as you guys are to me, and I'm in the car, <laughs> and the guy guy looks at me. He does that. That's teenager for, hey, what's up? <laughs> I was 26 at the time. So I was, you know, I was, I was pretty. And I'm sitting there. <laughs> he goes, where have you been all my life? <laughs> he doesn't know I'm pregnant. <laughs> and my girlfriend goes, oh my gosh, he would just die. And I was already getting out of the car. I got out of the car. I went, where have you been for the last eight and a half months, huh? <laughs> He took two steps away and goes, dude, you know her? The guy was like, oh. I bet he never did that again. So I'm living in Seattle now and I love it. It's my favorite place. Uh, it's very expensive to live, so I have to have a roommate, which I've mentioned several times before. What I didn't mention to you guys is my roommate is a lady. <laughs> And I don't feel like a lot of y'all were picturing a lady there. And that's your own bigotry. That's between you and yourself. That's really something you need to ask yourself about. Now, we're not dating in any way. She's just my roommate, just a friend of mine. Uh, she's really the only person that can tolerate me is what we say. Uh, it's cool. It's weird. Like, she's one of those gals she'll like go out on dates, bring guys home. And I don't know how to feel about that, right? Like she went to a bar the other day. She picked up a dude. That guy came back to our house, stayed the night, and then the next morning, all three of us found ourselves eating breakfast together. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you right now, Provo, that guy had no idea what was going on. <laughs> uh, he was a little concerned <laughs> over what was going on there. So I think I'm charming, I, I lighten the mood, I look at the guy, I'm like, come on, man, we're both adults. Are we seriously gonna sit here eating eggs and not talk about the fact that you slept with my wife in our house last night? <laughs> and I just threw my eggs at the wall and walked out of the room. You know? <laughs> On my way out, I whispered at her though. I was like, hey, good luck. <laughs> oh yeah, and the best thing is, I could do it again to any guy she brings over. What's she gonna do, warn him? I'm like, that's gonna work? <laughs> what could she possibly say? She's gonna be like, hey, listen, um, before I invite you up, I gotta let you know. <laughs> I live with this guy and he's gonna say he's my husband. <laughs> Just a little game we play with each other. Uh. I'm in the airport all the time. I'm a professional traveler. Here's my pro traveler tip for you guys. Next time you fly, this will make your trip through the airport more fun. Then make you take your shoes off going through security. Put them up on that conveyor belt. Right after you take your shoes off next time, go ahead, take your pants off. <laughs> Put them up on the conveyor belt. Nobody's looking right at you. Everybody's focused on their own stuff. They only see you out of the corner of their eyes. So don't make a big deal about taking the pants off. Make it smooth and natural. <laughs> right after the second shoe, slip off your pants, fold them up nice, put them on top of the shoes. It's gonna take practice. 
But if you do this right, people behind you in line will start to take their pants off. <laughs> I did not see this on the news. This is interesting. Why? Why wouldn't they report that? I, I would have worn different underwear, I think. If I didn't know this was coming. These are my comfortable, I'm gonna be flying all day underwear. Not my strangers might see them underwear. Uh, and the waitress was really upset because this guy who had been really rude at her table uh, didn't tip her. And instead of a tip, he wrote his phone number on the receipt. Like that was the tip. And she's like, I don't want this number. And I'm like, I do want that number. <laughs> because frankly, if anyone deserves to have a professional comedian messing with him, it's this guy. So she gave me the phone number, and I've been texting the guy for the last 72 hours. <laughs> oh yeah, it is fun. <laughs> Do you guys wanna hear our text messages? I knew you would, so I printed them out. I started off by saying, uh, Thanks for leaving me your number, winky face. <laughs> it's a good start. He said, aha, yeah. I was enamored by your matching boots and hair. So I said, what does enamored mean? said, it means I liked it a lot. I said, oh, I never heard that word. So you're like really smart. Smart and handsome, winky face. He said, ha yeah, I'm a double threat. He asked, are you from around here? And I said, I'm originally from Savannah, Georgia. Did you notice my accent? She didn't have an accent. <laughs> my daddy was a stock car racer and mama left when I was nine. <laughs> How about you? He said, I thought I sort of noticed an accent. <laughs> nope, no you didn't. And he said, I'm from California. I moved here about a year ago. I said, oh yeah, I never went to there. <laughs> Why'd you move to Utah? You one of them Mormans? <laughs> he said, ah, no way. I moved here for a job. I'm a computer programmer. In fact, at work, they call me the programming ninja. <laughs> Man, at this point, if I could murder someone with a text message, oh boy, <laughs> I'd do the world a favor. And he added, why would a pretty southern girl like you move to Utah? I said, daddy won a race. And the guy he beat didn't pay him. So daddy beat him up and went to jail. So I came out here to live with my aunt. Her name is Susan. Her last name is Carrot. Like the vegetable? Isn't that the weirdest name you ever heard? 
Susan Carrot? He said, definitely a funny name. So do you live in Salt Lake City or somewhere else? I said, I live in a place called Porvo. He said, I've heard of Provo. He said, I'm pretty sure it's Porvo. And then no messages for a little while. <laughs> Until last night, at two in the morning, I get a text from this guy that just says, you up? I was. I said, yes, I am, because my finger hurts really bad. <laughs> Do you know what kind of doctor I'm supposed to see for that? He said, just any doctor, I guess. I said, I only have enough money to see one doctor. So I need to make sure I find the right one the first time. So are there like finger doctors? He said, I don't think so. I think any physician will do. What happened to your finger? I said, I don't know. My aunt's cat scratched it and I thought it was fine, but now it's big and it hurts and it isn't normal colored. You know what? I think I just realized I'm scared of doctors. I'll probably just wait it out. And then this guy, singularly focused, just not even understanding what's happening, asks me, well, what are you wearing? So I said, how dare you? I'm a happily married man. No messages back since. So. The only thing I like about the news is when they interview somebody via satellite. There's always that two second delay. Don't they look stupid? <laughs> Let's go live to Tom. Tom's at, at Provo. Tom, you there? Yeah. I'd ask him easy questions, make him look stupid on live TV. What's two plus two? Four? Oh, I'd mess with it. Holy cow, look behind you, there's Bigfoot riding a skateboard. <laughs> Everything's late. You could scare him late in his earpiece, like rrr, 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 rrr. <laughs> Knock it off. Knock it off. Tom, we're still on the air. I don't care. <laughs> Toss it to sports. First of all, my dad was a practical joker, but very patriotic. I'll never forget the time he says, Larry, stand up tall and be proud. So I did, and he pushed me out of the boat. <laughs> <clears throat> now, I talk, about, uh, I talk about ladies, but actually I'm married. Sorry. <laughs> I love my wife because she really thinks like a man. She just thinks like a man. Like she's super cool, she loves sports, and she never cares about my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when I love somebody, I love to give them a hard time. Like I love to play the violin while she cries. <laughs> It's a real passion that I have. I love, I love to go to the park, find a couple who is arguing, get close, get close to them, and just play some background music. It's a lot of fun. I came close to this, uh, this, this, this couple and they were being nasty. 
she was telling him stuff like, you don't love me anymore. You're just like my dad. And he said something like, yeah, that's why he left you and your mom. <laughs> and after an hour, she says something like this. What the hell with the guitar guy? <laughs> and that's when I said, your boyfriend paid me. <laughs> She wanted to propose. <laughs> I swear she jumped on him, she kissed him, she said, I love you so much. And I looked at the dude and I was like, that was $800. <laughs> but men are not always smart because he said something like, I don't know you, dude. So she jumped on him, they start fighting, it gets nasty, everybody is watching and I'm just like, <laughs> After another hour, I looked at them and I said, guys, I'm gonna save this marriage. I'm gonna sing you a song. Would you shut your mouth? <laughs> now, what's very sad is that after this, he left her. But what was really messed up is that he left her without paying me. <laughs> so she had to pay for it. <laughs> and that's how I met my wife. Aww. <laughs> most romantic thing you heard. Uh, so now usually magicians don't share their secrets, right? I'm gonna give you guys some things that you can do just to mess with people, because the most fun doing magic is just to mess with people, right? Give them stories to tell. So here's, here's one you guys can do. Next time you're having a day where you're just feeling kind of down about yourself and you want a little pick-me-up, go to, I call this the self-esteem store. You guys probably call it Walmart, but... <laughs> Whenever I go shopping there and I look at all the other people, I always just feel a lot better about myself <laughs> and my own life and choices I've made. So, just me. All right, so you go to the pet section and get one of these. All right, it's a little squeaky toy. It's a little dog squeaky toy, right? This was a dollar at Walmart. It's a, this one's a sheep. Um, it's a pretty one. You can tell by their eyes. My uncle in Wyoming taught me that. <laughs> All right, now you gotta get the squeaker out of it. Yeah, you know what I was talking about too, huh? All right, now I gotta get the squeaker out, huh? All right, my uncle taught me that. All right, now, with this squeaker in your mouth, you now have the ability to make anything you want squeak anywhere you go. That's good fun for a dollar, isn't it? For a dollar! I don't know! I know, you had to look, huh? He has to look every time. He can't help it. You try and look away. He's trying to look away, but he's side-eyeing. Because you can't. Huh? <laughs> for a dollar. That's good fun for a dollar. You want to have fun at McDonald's? All right, all the little kids playing in the ball pit, you know? You take one ball out and you make it squeak and you throw it back in there with all the other balls. <laughs> and you go, all right, kids, $10 and a Happy Meal for whichever kid can find the squeaky ball. Go! You can go to a movie now. And you could come back two hours later and your dumb kids are still in there trying to, they're making piles and sorting them. It's like a dollar babysitter right there is what that is. <laughs> My sister has a three-year-old and a cat. I thought it'd be funny to make the cat squeak, right? <laughs> Go, get him! <laughs> About an hour later, we found the three-year-old hiding in the closet, just squeezing the <laughs> crap out of that cat. That's, I hate cats. <laughs> That's a good use for a cat right there. All right, guys, next time you go get a physical. <laughs> You're ahead of me, aren't you? You know what I'm talking about. That moment that most of us are a little uncomfortable with, that's the moment, right in the middle of that exam. You, go, <laughs> you went too far. We're all done. You went too far. You found the squeaky toy. We're all done. Right? 
rest of his life. <laughs> uh, all right, ladies, I don't want you to feel left out, okay? Next time you go get a mammogram. <laughs> and right when they got you squished in there all real tight, you go. Huh? <laughs> They'll remember you, won't they, huh? You get a story, they get a story, everybody wins for a dollar! <laughs> All right, I should put this away before I swallow it, because it makes your fart sound funny. <laughs> And farts are funny. If you don't think they are, then we can't be friends, all right? All right, so here's one you can do. Here's what, you know when you have one of those really smelly ones and you want everybody to take away? You know what I'm talking about, right? Look at the look on his face. He's already laughing, right? You know what I'm talking about. So here's what you do. Just as you, and you want everybody to just take a big whiff of it. Just as you let it out, you go, hey, do you smell smoke in here? And what happens, everyone in their minds, they become like a CSI detective, and they're gonna take a big sample of air in to see if they can detect little particles of smoke. But what happens is they take a big air sample in and they detect little particles of poop that came out of your butt. That's, that doesn't even cost a dollar, that's free. You're using that one, aren't you? Yeah, he's gonna be on the way home. You be careful. He goes, honey, I think the tires are burning. I was going to Japan, and I was actually happy when I was going to Japan. I was actually in a good mood in the airport. And my good mood gets derailed because he, a woman with a dog, just pooping in the airport. The dog was pooping. I want to make sure we're on the same page. I don't confuse any creative types. The woman was on FaceTime ignoring the dog. That was the problem. I'm a dog person. But you got to pay attention to your dog. She's on FaceTime ignoring the dog, and someone tries to get her attention very politely and just says, Miss, uh, your, your dog, the woman, looks away from her phone, looks at the guy, looks back at her phone and says, Some people are so rude. I know, we're like, this woman dies today. Like, this is exciting. <laughs> but she starts to walk away. She starts to leave. And someone else tries to stop her and goes, Miss, you, you have to clean up after yourself. She says, oh, they have people for that. <laughs> if you ever say that about cleaning up after yourself, they have people for that, well, we should all beat the hell out of you because they got doctors. <laughs> so now I'm left guarding the dog poop. That wasn't on the itinerary that Delta sent me. But I have to guard it. Because if I don't, someone's going to wheel their bag right into it. Because you don't walk through an airport expecting to see that on the ground. You don't walk through an airport and be like, oh, hope there's no dog poop on the ground. Like, no, you walk through an airport just going, Cinnabon, like that's all you do. <laughs> so I'm guarding the poop. That's a real sentence from my life. I'm guarding the poop, maintenance comes over, they clean it up. And I thought, okay, now I can go to my gate. Now I can go to Japan. Now I can be happy. But I couldn't be happy because this woman was at my gate. She was also going to Tokyo, and she has now done something even worse than what she's already done. What could you possibly do that's worse than what she's already done? Something that some of you in this room have done tonight. You might not admit to it, but you've done it. I don't ever want to see you do it again. This ends now. She was listening to music in a public space with no headphones on. Don't ever do that. We don't need you to be our airport DJ. They're playing smooth jazz, okay? They got us covered. <laughs> How inconsiderate of a human being is this person? I picture a car parked diagonally across three parking spaces, <laughs> just with paint on the bumper from the tricycle she hit. You know, just a total jerk. <laughs> now, most people are avoiding her because she's loud, she's obnoxious, but I sit down next to Cruella, <laughs> and I have a little bit of fun. I say, are you going to London on business? <laughs> to which she says, I'm going to Tokyo. To which I say, oh no, that flight's moved to gate 53C. This is the flight to London. Now that's fun for a lot of reasons. 
The main one is I want to give you a little bit of panic. You know the panic I'm talking about when you think you're wrong? The little <gasps> in your life? Like every time I've checked into a hotel, it takes them one extra second to find Hofstetter. I'm like, is this hotel even real? You know, like that panic. I thought it would last a couple of seconds. I figured she'd get up. She'd check the monitor, still, see it still said Japan. She'd talk to the gate agent. Gate agent would be like, yes, this is the flight to Japan. She would look around the gate and see that everyone except for me was Japanese. <laughs> How do you miss that one? What does she think I'm doing there? Like, oh, this redhead's taking all these Japanese people to London. What an interesting day. <laughs> but she doesn't do any of that. She just gets up and walks away. Just leaves. Doesn't even thank me, which I thought was rude. <laughs> but just leaves. Clear out of the terminal. So I stood up. And I boarded the plane. And I don't know what happened. How could I know? I was in Japan. I don't know what happened. I know that I was happy. I do know a few more things. I know that she did not make my flight. Now, I know that for a couple of reasons. One, I was sitting up front. I'd have noticed her if she walked by. But more important, we were delayed for about 20 minutes. Now, if you don't fly much, you might think that that's the plane waiting for her. That's adorable. <laughs> Planes don't wait for people individually. They will resell your seat while you're sitting in it. <laughs> but if you've already checked a bag and then you miss your flight, for safety reasons, they have to take the time to take the bag off. And that process takes about 20 minutes. <laughs> so I'm just sitting there laughing. Everyone else is getting upset about the delay. They're like, why are we on the tarmacs for so long? I'm like, you have no idea what I just did for you. You have no idea. I'm not the hero you deserve, but I'm the one you need. I know two more things. I know LAX very well. I know that airport so well that offhand, I know there is no gate 53C. I also know that Delta only has one flight from LA to Tokyo per day. That was the one that I was on. Now it's possible they rebooked her onto another airline. That can happen, right? I hope it was United and they beat the hell out of her. I hope so. Because they have people for that. People ask, too. They ask me, is your wife aware of the way you talk about her? No, so don't be Facebooking her. <laughs> this is her idea of funny. God bless me with an amazing woman. She's got a dark, twisted sense of humor. I mean it. She's this is her idea of funny. I'm in my chair at home. Every man, you have a chair, don't you, sir? Darn right, you have a chair. You're a man. That's your throne. If you ever went missing, they give a cushion in that chair to a bloodhound, wouldn't they? <laughs> Find that smell! <laughs> and then they'd revive the dog and send him on his way. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in my chair one afternoon, minding my own business. Now my wife comes up behind me, she starts rubbing me like that, she's got her arms around me like that, she's nibbling on my ear. And of course I'm thinking, is it February 29th? <laughs> It was a nice moment between a man and wife. We were married 20 plus years at that point, and it was a nice moment, in like a few minutes, just really nice and tender. And then at one point, she kisses the top of my head, and she hugs me. She said, I love you, Jeffrey. I said, I love you too, baby, and she walks away. And I'm basking in the warmth of this. I mean, 10, 15, I mean, at times I would yell. She was in the kitchen, baby, that was nice. Thank you. And at one point, my son comes walking through. Hey, Dad, who drew that big smiley face on your bald spot? <laughs> What I thought was fingernails was a sharpie. She was back there scratching artwork on my dome. So don't you feel sorry for her. She's sick and she's twisted. <sighs> I do like to mess with people. It's one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> I had this Dodge Challenger 2010 model with the, you know, the, the little thing popped out of the hood. I'm not a big car guy, but I like driving them, you know. 
It looked cool. It was like a Dukes of Hazzard kind of car. It was all black. And uh, this cop is behind me, and we're at Hardee's, and I'm going through the line. It's like, you know, eight people deep. And we're going around the corner, and every time the car moves ahead of me, I pop the clutch, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just because I can. And the cop is like, yeah, that's cool. And he's right behind me the whole time. I'm doing like eight times. It's like the slowest car chase ever. <laughs> And we get up to the window, and it's like, uh, and she says, hey, we got a problem. We're out of Coke Zero. What you want to drink? I was like, I don't care what you got. Just throw it in the bag fast. I'm getting chased by the cops. <laughs> and she throws my food at me. She says, go, 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 go. <laughs> Those people in South Georgia still talk about that, isn't it? Amazing. I like at Christmas time to go to malls, like a really, you know, the busy mall around where we live, and, and I look for that super spot, you know, the one that's closest to the, the food court that everybody wants, you know. And I'll go there for my lunch break, but I'll go ahead and get some food and uh, just do this on my lunch. And I'll just find the perfect parking spot, pull in, put it in reverse, and just put my foot on the brake and eat a sandwich. <laughs> pretty awesome actually <laughs> move the mirror just so you can see the perfect angle of people driving by and you'll, it's like fishing you catch one <laughs> you get to see him go through all these little levels of you know emotions and, like surprised and elated and confused <laughs> sad <laughs> rage <laughs> you know at that point you gotta let off the brake just a little bit and they're like well finally <laughs> you, know, and you pull back and you gotta wave at it and pull right back in <laughs> I can get away with it because I'm big, right? Oh, never mind. <laughs> He's so mad at me. I always make sure my kid was with me in the little car seat when I'm doing it in case, you know, it gets all mad and I'll get out. Hey, man, how you doing? And pull the kid out of the car seat. They're like, ah, I can't attack you today. That's my, that's, I don't wear, you know, bulletproof vest. I'm just a kid. <laughs> and it's not even a real kid. It's just this doll I have in the travel. <laughs> He's grown now. My oldest child, when he was five years old, uh, man, we had a fun time. We went to McDonald's, and the, the manager was just having a bad day, right? You could tell that. It's like this, you know, gotta take your order. Just, like, just mad. And it doesn't take me any time at all to process, ooh, I'm gonna mess with this person. <laughs> and so there I am, my five-year-old kid. We're trying to get something to eat at McDonald's. And this guy's all mad and ragey. And I said, yeah, I'll take, you know, the big and tasty, whatever meal I was getting that day. Let me ask my son what he wants. And that's gibberish, just so you know, I have no idea. As a small child, when we left Iran, and I never coached him into this. I just thought it'd be funny if I did that. And he looked at me and goes, Just until he hyperventilated, hyperventilated, you know. Finally stopped. He wants a cheeseburger happy little ketchup only. For real? I guess it's a hard language. Okay. My dream job would be to own a red box. <laughs> I want to rent movies out to people and then like change the sound of some of the movies just a little bit. Some of the classics like Titanic, I wouldn't change much. That's a great movie, except at the end when the ship is sinking and it's going down, as soon as the ship sinks beneath the waves, I would just have the music go, Just so everybody watching Titanic for the first time would be like. <laughs> wow, James Cameron's a monster. I want to tell you guys a story about the worst thing I ever did when I was a kid. Do you guys want to hear it? Yeah? It's not that bad. 
Um, but I will say it involves a, a prank and a can of fart spray. So you know it's gonna be hilarious. So here's what happened. I bought this can of fart spray, and this is true. I wanted to spray it in my school, right? But I knew I needed to try it in a small scale environment first, so I sprayed some in my parents' basement. But here's the thing about it. Fart spray doesn't smell like fart. It smells like radioactive garbage. So you smell it and you think, oh no, tell my family I love them. So my dad came downstairs. He was like, what is that smell? And I was like, dad, it's fart spray. Ha ha ha, gotcha, it's a prank. And he was like, that's not funny. Don't ever do that again. If you ever do that again, I will send you to Africa so you can learn how to work. When I was growing up, my dad used to always threaten to send us to Africa so we could learn how to work anytime we did something that he didn't get to do when he was a kid. Like sleeping in past the crack of dawn or wearing shoes. <laughs> he used to get so upset. He'd be like, why are you wearing those Michael Jordan shoes? They're so expensive. You don't need them. I'd be like, dad, the shoes were probably sewn together by kids in Africa. <laughs> So consider it a donation to your homeland. <laughs> so anyway, you guys, I bought this can of fart spray and I sprayed it in the school, in this teacher's classroom who I knew would not think it was funny. He'd get very upset. Sprayed it in his lunch, sprayed it under his desk, <laughs> sprayed it on the papers he was grading, everywhere. And then I had PE that period, so I went outside, I didn't have to smell it. Now here's the thing I didn't know when I did this. I didn't know that there were people on the roof of the school welding that day. And so when they smelled the fart spray in the school, because remember, it smells like radioactive garbage, they immediately thought, oh no, the people on the roof welding hit a gas pipe, no pun intended. <laughs> so the school principal called poison control. <laughs> so I'm outside at PE, and I see these three trucks pull up to the school, and these dudes in hazmat suits hop out. And they start running in the school. If you've never seen someone run in a hazmat suit, it's hilarious. They look like oversized Oompa Loompas. You guys, they were running like, what is this smell that we have to clean up? <laughs> it smells like it came out somebody's butt. We don't like the smell of that. So, long story short, they found out it was me and that it was just a prank. <laughs> and the school principal called me in her office. She was like, Lom, if I look in your backpack, am I gonna find a can of fart spray? And I was like, fart spray in my backpack? Girl, are you crazy? There's no fart spray in my backpack. She was like, Lom, if I look in your backpack, am I gonna find the fart spray? I was like, yes, you will. Uh, you asked twice, so yeah. She got me with the old ask them twice routine. She was like, Lom, give me the can of fart spray. I was like, give you the fart spray? That's crazy, this was expensive, I'm not giving you. She was like, Lom, give me the fart spray. I was like, okay, here, here you go. So I gave it to her. It was uncomfortable handing her the can because the artwork on the can was like a cartoon drawing of a bare backside with green air coming out of it. And on the can it said like, fart spray, spray it in your school. <laughs> Fart spray intended for school use. <laughs> so she took the can, she's looking at it, she's furious. She's like, Lom, why did you do this? I was like, I know, but it's part of my culture. <laughs> <laughs> Can't help it. I didn't write the rules. <laughs> So long story short, you guys, my, uh, my punishment for doing this is I got suspended from school for two weeks. But it was two weeks before winter break. <laughs> Which is why this joke is called how to get a month off of school. <laughs> also, that was the first Christmas that I spent in Africa. Learning how to work. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it was a memorable time, though, at a restaurant. This is a true story, too. I pranked a TGI Fridays. I got all dressed up, had a nice button-down T-shirt on, slacks, nice shoes. I went there alone. I went up to the hostess. I was like, hi, Daniel, party of 11. She's like, would you like me to wait till your friends arrive? I was like, no, thanks. That won't be necessary. They'll be here. It's my birthday.
So she's like, oh, okay, happy birthday. Sat down, got a drink. 15 minutes went by, still no friends. Started act worried. Another 20 minutes went by, which just came up to me. Is everything all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm just waiting. Got some food. Finally, it'd been an hour at this point. Still no friends, still eating alone. Which just came up to me. She's like, look, I don't know how to tell you this, but I don't think your friends are coming. So I started to cry. <laughs> and that's how you get a free steak dinner at TGI Fridays. They say that pain plus time equals funny. I believe that. No matter how bad a situation is, if you wait a long time, there's usually something to look back and laugh on. That's the humor installed at the factory when we were born, you know? I think mine comes from my grandfather. He always played practical jokes. Like, one year for Christmas, I wanted a slinky toy. We couldn't even afford that. So he goes out of the shed, cuts out a bed spring, and wraps it up. <laughs> Open it up, it's rusty. There's one coil. I'm like, that's a piece of garbage. You go, oh, no, that's an antique slinky. <laughs> Even the worst, we lived in a trailer. We didn't have stairs. <laughs> All right, for the rest of you. <laughs> I'm on the curb, slink. <laughs> e. I got my grandfather back. I shortened the left side of his walker. <laughs> Grandpa, dinner's ready. All right, I'll be right. Oh, you suck. <laughs> If I get to a hill, I'm going to turn around. And they said I would never use geometry. Truthfully, comedy is very hard. People don't really realize that. Probably because the best joke in the entire world has already been written, and not by me. It's the owl joke. Have you ever heard of it? It's amazing. My cousin told it to me a couple years ago. He walked right up to me and goes, Hey, Matt, someone said you sound like an owl. And then I said, Who? <laughs> if you're not laughing at that, you are dead inside. You understand me? That is the funniest thing you're going to hear from me tonight. And I'm an idiot. I fell for it hook, line, and sinker. Like, I'm pretty sure I flapped a little bit. I was like, Who? <laughs> I was looking around to see who did it. Who? <laughs> Because <laughs> owls turn that doesn't matter. Now, <laughs> here's the weird part. As soon as it happened, all this male pride just swelled up inside of me. And I'm like, man, if I fell for it, my wife, she's really going to fall for it. <laughs> so I assembled all the guys that did it to me. And I'm like, let's go get her. We're legally an angry mob at this point. We have pitchforks and torches. We're singing through the mist, through the woods, through the darkness and the shadows. It's a nightmare, but it's one exciting ride. So you pray, then we're there at the drawbridge of a castle, and there's something truly terrible inside. It's a beast. He's got fa I sang the whole song. I went up to her. I did the joke. She asked me every question except for who. I have no clue how she did it. I was so excited. I was like, sweetheart. <laughs> Someone said, you sound like an owl. She's like, what? <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. Some, someone said, you sound like an owl. She's like, when? <laughs> Like, like a minute ago. It doesn't matter. Listen. Someone. Someone said that you sound like an owl. She's like, what's their name? I'm like, that's a good question. Could you rephrase it? The person that said that to you. What is that person's name? I lost it. I was like, you're supposed to say who? Who, 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 who? She's like, now who sounds like an owl? I'm like, come on! Another thing about myself, guys, I don't make a lot of good decisions. I really don't. Like, uh, there was this one time I got a text message, and it was from the wrong number. And the text message said, hey, babe, can you pick up the kids after school? <laughs> I 
I probably should have texted back, wrong number. But instead I texted, yes. <laughs> They text back right away. They're like, thanks, you're the best. I text back, I know. <laughs> and then this time they text again. This time they say, I love you. And I'm too far in, so I'm like, I love you too. <laughs> Look, guys, I know I need to tell them this is a wrong number, but I've also never done this good in a relationship before. <laughs> Like, I don't know the last time I said I love you to anybody. And now I'm saying it as a fake husband. <laughs> or wife. I don't even know which one I am right now. <laughs> um, but it's almost time to pick up these kids, so I need to say something, so I finally do. Um, I text back, I'm like, hey, this is a wrong number. This turned into a joke and this clearly got out of hand. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a terrible person. Do you still want me to pick up your kids? <laughs> and they said yes, so uh, I'm just... I'm not big on pranks, but I do like to have fun every now and then. I had a buddy text me one day and he was like, hey, you ever gonna call me back? Which I thought was kind of a stupid text because clearly I'd forgotten to call him. So, uh, so I called him and I got his voicemail, which was stupid. I called him right then. So this is the voicemail I left on my friend Jim's phone uh, when he didn't answer. I was like, hey, Jim, this is Andy. I don't know what happened to you. I guess you died. <laughs> and then I just hung up. <laughs> 10 minutes later, Jim calls me and he was like, dude, please tell me you were talking weird. <laughs> because if not, something's wrong with my phone. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Must be something wrong with the speed on your phone. <laughs> you should push the up button on your volume. Which I think he did push the up button on his volume, and then I was like, How about now? Is it better now? Can you tell me now? How about now? <laughs> so Jim and I haven't talked in years. That is weird. So the neighborhood I live in, I just got out of a seven year vendetta with a neighbor over a, over a parking space. Uh, I live in this old school Italian neighborhood, right? And there's this one guy there, this violent old man. You know, he's got a, he's got a tomato plant in front of the house. He keeps a lead pipe in it. <laughs> you know, it's not in plumbing just to threaten people with it. He, he, he's got, he takes up four parking spaces. He's got three cars, he puts cones in between takes up four spaces, which is incredibly, there's no parking there at all, it's just so annoying. So I'm a Scorpio, I'm a little vindictive. Whenever I see one of his spaces open, I park in his space. And he does stuff to my car. That's how this whole thing started. Like the first time I saw the space open, I park in the space, I come back, there's a hard boiled egg stuffed in the exhaust. I'm like, just put it on, okay, okay. So wait, wait till it gets a little uh, warm. He cracks the windows in one of his car. I filled up his car, I had a big bag of glitter. I filled it up with glitter. <laughs> And I know he cleaned it out because he had sprinkles on his face for like a week. You know, he looked like a, he looked like a stripper, but he didn't smell like Yankee vanilla candles. <laughs> a little, little time goes by, a little time goes by. I see the space open, I park in this space, right? I come back the next day, the gas flap is open, the cap is missing. There's an empty bag of Domino sugar duct taped to the, to the top of the car. I'm like, hey, put sugar in my gas tank. So I roll, put in neutral, I roll to the gas station, have the guys look at it. They're like, no, there doesn't seem to be any sugar residue, but uh, it seems like 
somebody's trying to send you a message, right? Like, oh, was it Sicily in 1821? So I'm like, okay, all right. So I wait till it gets cold. I take his cones, I get them wet on the bottom. I stick them on the top of each car and they freeze like sirens, like sirens. And I, I drive by when he's trying to break one off. I'm like, whoop, whoop, and then I drive off, right? And I drive off. <laughs> so a little time goes by, a little time goes by. Alternate side parking. You know, we got to move the cars from one side to the other. It's suspended for a week. So I see the space open, I park in there, I leave it for a week out of spite, right? I take the train out of spite. It's beautiful, right? I come back at the end of the week, there are eight slices of bologna on the hood of my car that have been sitting there. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but here's the thing about bologna, this is how bad it is for your digestive system. If you leave it on the hood of a car for more than three and a half days, it adheres to the paint. So when you pull it off, it takes a big circle of paint with it. So I have this polka dot hood. <laughs> permanently polka dotted hood and this guy's yelling stuff out of the window these old world war ii insults you know send the salami to your boy in the army like, hey, you know. <laughs> and my wife's like let it go let it go whatever like, eh. so then like another week i i said i park in this space or whatever i come back the windshield's cracked i got four flat tires he's keyed the car he's broken off the antenna i'm about to lose my, my mind my wife's like just let it go let it go this guy's crazy, you're out of your league, right? You know, but in my heart, I want revenge. <laughs> I'll let it go. Well, uh, about a month ago, the dude dies, and I had nothing to do with it. I mean, I wasn't there, they just, you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna say I'm sorry, because I'm not, but, um, <laughs> but still, it's a human life, you gotta do the right thing. I, I see his wife a couple weeks ago, so I, like, uh, I mean, just wanna extend my condolences about Anthony's uh, untimely demise. Uh, hopefully, he's in a better place, you know, with more abundant parking. <laughs> and, uh, and we had a moment together, we had a moment. She gets all teary-eyed, she's like, you know, you're the only one that said anything in the whole neighborhood, you're the only one that said anything. She goes, a lot of people didn't notice. Anthony, Anthony was very sick for the last five years. That is why he acted the way he did. And she goes, really, there was only one thing that kept him going. I'm like, well, what was that? She's like, he hated you! <laughs> I do miss uh, being on the Paralympic team. One thing I really miss is traveling with everybody. Because uh, I gotta say, there's nothing more entertaining than watching 12 dudes with cerebral palsy get off an airplane in a row. <laughs> Everybody in the terminal thinks there was some type of zombie invading the oh. like that, you know, we just, just like messing around, you know. <laughs> See how far through customs we can get. <laughs> Last one taste loses. <laughs> you guys want to continue this party, go out there in the Provo area, find yourself an Asian man and try to get him to say the word hubba bubba. The cat! <laughs> Ask him, excuse me, sir, you have any hubba bubba? He'll go, oh no, I'm all out of hubba bubba. <laughs> A lot of you will not try that, but there will be one person in this room. There's gonna be at a Starbucks just screaming at some poor age. People don't take nearly advantage of the pranks you can play on loved ones with your will. Because you're not there for them to ask questions. Leave practical jokes in it. 
don't tell them about it. Just like do the whole eulogy in a language you or no one else in your family can speak. It's like, why is this being done in Korean? I don't get this. Put a frozen yogurt bar at the end of your body. Just have fun with it. I'm gonna put all kinds of weird stuff in there. I'm gonna write in that I wanna be scattered, but not cremated. <laughs> Let my lawyer chew on that one for a couple weeks, right? Oh gosh, well people are curious. You're a comedian, what do you do with your free time? Here's what I did today. I put on a red polo shirt, a pair of khaki pants, I went down to Target and I messed with people. <laughs> That's fun! He is a good kid, he is, I tell you. But he's doing these just awful pranks, and I'm like, buddy, you know, I'm a clean comedian. That's what I do for a living. And I, so I go, I, I said, buddy, here, you stay out of the bedroom, you stay out of the bathroom, you don't curse, and you just do, and you don't do a prank where you can't hug somebody afterwards. You know, make it a good. And and last last like between Thanksgiving and Christmas, I was home, and my house box up Old Country House box up to Old Country Road, and there was there was a deer that got hit and didn't quite make it. My son puts a Santa Claus suit on, goes outside, lays next to the dead deer. My wife said a school bus went by, a bunch of second graders. Seven year old kids. You guys like having fun? Get yourself an empty bucket from the Colonel Sanders. There's more. <laughs> Put a real live chicken in it. Go up to the window at KFC. <laughs> Come here. Yeah. Look. This chicken ain't done. Fuck! <laughs> it's hard. I ride the bus a lot of places, but the bus gets kind of boring, so I try to have fun on the bus. Like, whenever somebody sits next to me on the bus and falls asleep, I like to nudge him real hard and ask him questions. You know, like, hey man, think we're gonna make this jump? Think we can go around this curve at 55 miles per hour with a bomb on the bus? What's your favorite Keanu Reeves movie? <laughs> Speed 2. <laughs> uh, we had a very eccentric dog, my wife and I. Uh, we have a three-legged pug named Taz. That's a letter for each limb still attached to his body. We're praying we never have to call him Mr. T. And people always do what you guys did when they hear we got a three-legged dog. They're like, oh, that's so sweet. You guys got a rescue. And I gotta be like, nah, we did it. <laughs> I'm still paying for that surgery. <laughs> and it's a boring story, man. He had a birth defect. His elbow grew him backwards, so he broke his leg. We had to snip it. But we didn't know he broke his leg for like three months because he didn't say nothing. <laughs> We just thought he had a little swagger to him. We didn't know him. He's cool, he's hip, let him be all right. But that's a boring story, I don't like it. It's not chivalrous, there's nothing exciting about that. So what I like to do is I like to mess with people. When folks ask me what happened to his leg, I give them a different answer every single time. Kids are the best. Oh my goodness, I love it when kids come up. This little boy come up to me one time, I, was, I had my dog at the park, he's like, Hey, mister, what happened to your dog's leg? And I just went, we lost it. And I kept walking. <laughs> we were playing fetch and I threw it too hard. What do you want from me, kid? <laughs> Had one guy come up to me and say, like, hey, what happened to your dog's leg? And I was like, the war? <laughs> Vietnam vet! In the sense that he went to a Vietnamese veterinarian. <laughs> I 
I'm gonna let y'all pass that one around for a minute. <laughs> What's been weird though recently is people been trying to guess what happened to his leg. That's been unusual. I'm not ready for that. I was walking him a couple weeks ago, a guy rode by on his bicycle. He's like, hey, did your dog get hit by a car? <laughs> what car is gonna hit a pug and he only loses the front right leg? <laughs> If I hit a pug with my car and that's the end result, I'm returning that car. <laughs> it is not safe for me to drive. I need some with better safety features. Like, I don't know, man, a Hot Wheels or a Tonka truck or something. I can't have pugs shaking me off like, watch where you going. <laughs> what are you thinking, man? Get your life together. People always ask if my dog gets around okay. I take him off his leash. I'm like, catch him. Say goodbye to those three hours. <laughs> He's faster without the leg. Don't feel bad for him. <laughs> now he could juke, stiff arm, spin move. He's the perfect Madden character. <laughs> we had to move out of our apartment because of him. Yeah, we used to live in an upstairs apartment and he gets in these running fits and wants you to catch him. So if you live downstairs underneath us and we live in the second story apartment, it sounds like we're filming all the montages from Scooby-Doo upstairs. <laughs> and so it takes me like 20, 30 minutes sometimes to catch him because he's real quick and agile and I finally catch him. And I'm like, da da da, but it's too late. I hear it pounding on my front door and I open the door and it is my neighbor from downstairs. And to say that she is upset is a terrible understatement. <laughs> she is red in the face, veins popping out of her neck, yelling at me like, excuse me, could you tell your dog to keep it down for just one night, please? And I just looked at her and went, we already cut off one of his legs so he'd make less noise. <laughs> to do. I want to leave you people with a little gift, though, because you deserve a little extra tonight. And um, before I give you this gift, you all have to do me a quick favor. Think back in your past. We all have somebody we want to get back at, don't we? <laughs> Some people's butt cheeks just tightened up right now. <laughs> I've been watching. You look like nice people. You're not the violent type. And if you're anything like me, <laughs> way too lazy to stalk. So, I have a three-point plan at little or no cost to get back at these people. Now, step one's real simple. Um, picture what kind of car they're driving. Have you got it in your mind? All you need to know is the car's year, make, and model, okay? With that little piece of information, about 20 bucks, you can go to Walmart. Shoot, they're open right now. You can buy and install for them a locking gas cap. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> Thank you. It's so simple. Yeah. Well, you don't give them the key. See, it may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but one day this week, they will coast up to that pump on fumes. <laughs> you win. <Okay. laughs> Step two. Uh, tomorrow morning, swing by your local post office. They have stacks of these. They're free. Take all you want. They even pay the postage. I think you can even do this online. I love this thing. It's the moving change of address form. <laughs> Getting ahead. That's good. What you do <laughs> is you fill out your insignificant other's name and address right up here on the top. Down here on the bottom, just have all their mail sent. Wherever you want it to go, actually. Yeah, make it a family project. It's fun for the kids. Let them pick the state. <laughs> but they fix it. I don't know how they always fix it. Usually takes about a year. <laughs> they haven't paid a bill. Their credit score is terrible. Well, that's where you move in for the kill. Now, this last one's my personal favorite, mostly because unlike the moving form, this one's not a felony. <laughs> <laughs> but if you would like to get some of these, 
Remember this. Go email me. Go to my website, southernnotstupid.com. Tell me you were here. Tell me you want one. And I will send this to you because I've got friends at their big headquarters where I can do this, okay? This is so much fun. Final step on the revenge is a return envelope from the Atlanta Center for Disease Control. The <laughs> CDC. itself, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Once you get this, all you need is a stamp, okay? <laughs> don't try to forge the letter. If you do, you'll blow the gag. You can't write the right letter. You just send this envelope, ripped open and empty. <laughs> <laughs> they won't sleep for a month, okay? Anyway, you remember what it was like when you were nine, ten years old. You knew what you hoped Santa brought you. You know what you were looking for under that tree at Christmas morning. My son jumps out of bed, runs down the stairs, looks under the tree, and sees that perfect little box. Yes. Grabs it, rips off the paper. I got a phone for Christmas. I got a phone for Christmas. Opens it up, starts reading directions. Daddy, Daddy, I have to plug this phone in and allow it to charge completely before I use it. It might take as much as six hours. I go, well, you better get to it. Plugs it in all day long. He's running by the little table. Ooh, it's not ready. It's still charging. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Finally, after about five hours, the phone is charged up. Takes it off the charger, turns it on. Dad. Daddy, there is something seriously wrong with this phone. It's not working. I said, yeah, you know, maybe you should ask Santa for service, too. <laughs> hey, maybe next Christmas. Some awkward things about teaching that happen a lot, you know? Like, I got a phone call the, day, the other day at 7 a.m. on a Sunday, which is never good. No good phone calls happen like from 1 a.m. to 9 a.m. Like single digit phone calls are never good. It's always, at best, a butt dial, you know what I mean? It's never like, I'm bringing over pie and like my new miniature pet pony. Like that's never, never good, right? The guy goes, hey, I'm just calling about this brand new truck you have on Craigslist. My truck wasn't on Craigslist, right? Two minutes later, different guy goes, hey, I'm just calling to buy this brand new truck you have on Craigslist. One of my students put my truck on Craigslist. <laughs> For $500. Brand new truck on Craigslist. I got 123 phone calls before noon to buy my truck on Craigslist. I went to take it down. All the correct information. Three pictures of my truck outside my home. That's creepy. When did that happen? <laughs> And what other pictures did you take while you were here? Did you also put me up on casual encounters? Cause uh, <laughs> zero phone calls about that. <laughs> Weirdest part to me was they photoshopped a rainbow sticker on the back that said, honk if you're gay. <laughs> Cause they thought that would emasculate me. They thought that would hurt my feelings and I don't care about that. I, I, don't, I dress cute, you know what I mean? I don't care. <laughs> Right? Like, if I go through a day and nobody thinks I'm gay, that's when I'm sad. I'm like, hey, thought I looked good today. <laughs> right? But then they photoshopped another one that said, I heart kid rock. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I'll mouth kiss a man before I go to a kid rock concert for sure. I am not going to kid rock. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Neither is she, apparently. <laughs> I'm glad there's so many families here tonight. Don't introduce me to your kids after the show. I am not what you would call a role model. I have three nephews under the age of five who are insane for Sesame Street. And I can do the voice of Elmo. I get those nephews to do stuff for me, like they were my own personal Sesame Street servants. It's awesome. I'm like, hey. Do you want to be Elmo's friend? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, do you want to do something for Elmo? <laughs> hey, hey, go get Elmo a beer. Go get him a beer! <laughs> Yay! You got Elmo a beer! <laughs> Elmo loves you. <laughs> and listen, 
listen, my nephews are two, three, and four. Dang near stupid, okay? They, they think I'm Elmo. They will do whatever I say as long as I use the voice. Stupid, I can say, okay, this is what Elmo wants you to do. He wants you to walk up to that hot girl, spank her on the high knee, and say, who's your daddy? And they'll do it to complete strangers at church. They don't care at all. They don't care. They don't care. I love that voice. I love playing prank phone calls using the Elmo voice. I like calling radio stations. I don't call just any radio stations. I like to call the hardcore rap Def Jam radio stations. Because those DJs answer the phone really, really hard. And it's live. You can't edit that out. <laughs> I'll call other, yeah, 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 boy. This is 101.9 WKZQ, dog. This is DJ e who am I talking to, dog? Who do I got on the phone? I'll be like, this is Elmo! <laughs> hey, DJ, can you play that song that goes, yeah, uh-huh, you know what it is? Black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. Look at all the old white people over here. They're like, what the heck is black and yellow? What is that? Is that like a bumblebee or something? Well, we're allergic to bees. We didn't bring our EpiPens. We gotta go. They've changed. They're in their 30s, 40s. They have tennis balls hanging down in their garage to let them know when to stop the vehicle from running into the workbench. Do you know these people? <laughs> Some of you are these people probably, right? Yeah. Close to Steven, close to, all right, balls on the windshield. Shut this beast down. Shut it down now. If you know someone who has a tennis ball hanging down in their garage, when they're not home, move it a foot forward. <laughs> all right, one more, one more. This is my favorite impersonation. Too. This is what I think we all look like when we get up a little bit too early in the morning after we've been out way too late the night before. We might look a little something. If this looks like somebody you're with tonight, I apologize right now. <laughs> I love when people go, it doesn't look anything like you. Well, thank goodness. <laughs> I can actually see you through these things. It's pretty nuts, huh? You know, actually, I have uh, some glasses for sale if you want them tonight uh, for, uh, I'll be out there. But the, the little souvenir if you're looking for something fun to do uh, afterwards. These are so much fun. Anybody work in a cubicle? Who works in a cubicle? Anybody? Can you imagine like about four o'clock in the afternoon just peeking over the <laughs> Can I borrow your stapler? <laughs> How about nurses? Any nurses out there? Imagine somebody coming out of anesthesia. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> no, the operation was completely successful. <laughs> well, you did flatline for a while, but I don't think there'll be any complications. <laughs> you know, put these on a baby. Oh, that's so much fun. Little baby just sits there. <laughs> you know what he's probably thinking? You know, someday you'll be in a nursing home. <laughs> and sweet revenge will be mine. <laughs> so if you want to buy these things, I have them for sale. I have some uh, wacky glasses for sale, uh, and they're $5 or two for 10 or three for 20. And um, <laughs> you might even save yourself some money, but if you come home tonight, you get pulled over by the cops, have some fun. <laughs> you scared me! <laughs> bad boys, bad boys, bad boys. And this is fun to do at the Waffle House at three o'clock in the morning. We good over here. I need another waffle. We'll have a beef around here.